Hello, I'm Fred Gunsmoke Chatwin, and uh, I had an idea one day about trying to paint a race boat. One of a race boats on a rock, so I I went about it and it took me I think about two and a half days to do this the boat this one here the the half throttle, and I said well maybe some of the race fans you know this is quite a big thing in this area might be interested in. So I see how they come out, and so I was, you know, quite pleased with my first painting here. And uh, the next one I done was the was the Dodge it, which I don't have here anymore. But I think uh, there's still some pictures of it on Facebook and stuff. But this is the first one, and. I think this one was the third one. It's pretty. Uh, this is quite a crowd favorite. The Jaws. Everybody likes. Everybody likes the Jaws. I know he never got to race much this summer because he didn't cut his engine back to the 550 class. But hopefully Clarendon will get back into it next summer. But he's quite a crowd favorite. I've got quite many orders to do the Jaws. This one. I'm I get the right rocks. That's the name of the game in this rock painting. You've got to have the right size rock for the painting you're doing and. These rocks are a little small. I get barely room enough to get my boat on that, no more than background. And uh, once I get the right rocks, and people get the orders in, and I'm also going to try to, I'm going to try to paint one on canvas. Never painted on canvas before, so I can't make no guarantees what it's going to look like or how it's going to come out. But I want to try one on canvas, just a simple painting. Then if I can master that. They can have the option of having a favorite boat painted on a nice rock or on a on a canvas frame picture. So we'll see. That's coming up real soon. Hopefully, surface, it would be so much better. But when you're working with an old nubbly rock <laughs> and trying to paint a straight waterline on a nubbly rock, I have a job painting a straight waterline on on a smooth surface. But I guess you can only get it as close as you can get it because it's just so much you can do. Knows it. It looks like the boat you're painting, I guess, is the main thing. It's a learning process, I guess, for me. You're painting with your wrong hand. Yeah, I've been working with my wrong hand all my life. Like any old left handed. It's been a big problem for me. But anyway. I shall do what I can do. My son, get these strips painted on now. Now, get a little shading. I'm kind of prehistoric in my this little paintbrush I'm using here. I think I painted the last six months with this same little paintbrush. Everything I've ever done. And it works, so I'll stick to it. Good enough. You need a very small brain and a big imagination to do this job. I'll tell you that much. And a lot of patience. No wonder half of them artists in the world were eccentric. They had to be. Just to do it. I 
That if you like it, I guess. If that's what you like to do, go for it. Be called for race boat art. Aye. Uh, Be called for race boats. Yep. Yeah. Yes, it is right now. I was more or less kind of saving this little project for Christmas, you know what I mean? For Christmas work, but I wanted to start a couple just to see how I could do before I got right into it. And it's unreal. And once you start something like this, the people that will be, you know, I never really had no order for, for the turtle but I, I'm gonna paint the turtle because she was one of the original boats and I said I'm gonna do it I have plenty of time to paint the, the other ones I'm hoping as uh, fall goes along but get everything you know everything where you want it this is <laughs> It's a job. Get the shading. What I find hard to paint is shading. I, uh, I'm just learning how to get shading in there. Nothing is what it seems like. You've got to have shading to make it look right. You would never believe what a little bit of shading will do. It just brings out the, the color of the boat and the whole deal. Same as the bottom. I know the bottom on the on the turtle is all red. But once you put it up and look at it from this side, you're looking at the shade side of it. And it even shows the, sh the shade of the black streak under her, under her bow here where she's lifted out of water. So you've got to have that on now. That's what gives it that detail. Just to paint a boat a straight color, well, if it was out of water, yes, maybe. And it's like anything, I guess, you learn as you go. You learn as you go. It ain't going to be perfect. Nothing ever is, but... I do the best I can do for what I got to work with. Like I said, homemade paint brushes and <laughs> whatever I pick up that I feel comfortable with, that's what I work with. How yeah. long for each race boat rock? A boat like the turtle with very little detail on it once I get the, the main thing done here. I'd say it's going to take me two days. And a lot of the other boats, I know I was, uh, I think I was three days on the Dodget, and I was two days on the Yogi, three days on the Half Throttle, and about a day and a half, two days on the Jaws. So this one here, I'd say a bit of two-day project, if I put in, you know, quite much time. There's so much fine detail like, to it. It's a lot of, a lot of painting, especially a boat that's got a lot of decals on them and numbers and th and pictures and and stuff on them. It takes some time, I know that, to paint them. But I'm going to try to paint them as close as I can get them. They might not be exact, but it's like the turtle here. She's, uh, you know. I just started that this afternoon. She's she's coming along once I get the trimmings a little better. But this is these rocks are hard to paint on because they got so many nubbles. If I can, you know, get me some nice smooth rocks, something that I can work with. See, mistakes you make. You want to put black on something, you end up putting white on it. Anybody else would have got aggravated and cursed and swore wine. I need no good to curse and swear. It is what it is. <laughs> Just made a little keep a painting. 
Going to do a penny pinch or two? Yeah, I told Clifford I'd do his boat for him. Yeah. That shouldn't be no no big deal. Yes, he's got some details and stuff on it, but it's a small boat. It shouldn't be too bad. I told him yesterday I would do it for him, so. Yep, that's good to hear. Yeah, I'm going to do some outboards. I imagine Johnny Hot Dog, Little Hawk, and Dwayne Stewart, and different ones, you know. Albert Atwood, that do good. Racing the outboards will probably be after them. The, they will be after me to paint a picture of their of their boats for them. I don't mind. Like I said, I'll I'll give her a try. <laughs> Gonna show some of the rocks I painted. This is the first one I tackled of the half throttle. And uh, didn't know how it was going to come out, but I said I'm just going to try one and see. But in uh, I was quite pleased with it with my first work, you know what I mean? I know it ain't no professional artwork, nothing like that, but still, uh, even to satisfy me, because I'm quite quite particular with my painting, is a job for me to say, well, I've done a decent job on this or that, but I was I was quite pleased with it for the first one. It, it uh, you know, I know there's no background or anything much, but still, I said, I'm just going to try one, Ben. People see this, say, well, you should paint my boat, you should paint, I said, hold on here now. <laughs> this one here was one of the first, some of that, the race boats in this area. It was just original an old handline boat, I guess, and Craig Ross and Michael Cunningham done a rover and uh, decided to make a race boat out of it in the name of the Turtle One. So I had a guy brought me a picture of it, and I said, geez, she just something about that boat that, Caught joy. She liked to leap out of water and kind of lay over on the side. And I said, I'm going to paint it regardless because she don't race no more. They've, they've pretty well done away with her. But I said, it should make a nice looking painting on a rock. And it does. So Craig hasn't seen this yet. So maybe if he sees it, he might be interested in getting it. Because it would be something to have, you know, in years to come. They, one of his grandchildren or something can look at him and say, well, what was that boat, Grant? And say, well, that was my race boat. In the first year we raced, so but everybody likes the painting. Everybody likes the way it, the boat itself looks like it's kind of wants to lay over on its side like the turtle did, and about half of it would leap right out of water. So she uh, she come out pretty good. And I might have to get up to get this one. <coughs> the two thousand and. 12 750 champions, the Blur. Courtney Ross and his brother Johnny own the boat. And Courtney, if you're watching, you ain't supposed to be looking at this. This, you just shut your eyes because uh, you ain't supposed to see this till later on, I guess, but you know where I'm coming from. Oh. But she, uh, the pretty boat. I like to have a little bit of rock to paint her on, but. I gotta wait till I get to a certain area to find these rocks, and it's, it's down in Liverpool County. And once I get the right rocks, it's a job enough to paint anything on a rock. But you want to try painting the waterline of a boat on a rock full of nubbles and hollows and humps and bumps? It's not easy. And I guess what you can do is just do what you can do. But if you take your time and find the right rocks. It's got a good flat surface on them, you know, you, they, they look a lot better now. But anyway, so if you're interested in having a race boat painted for a Christmas present or for a birthday present or for a friend, well, give me a call, give me a shout, and I'll see what I can do for you. Make no guarantees, but they will look like a boat of some kind, so thank you.
Pretty well every one of them I raised by hand. Cost me some money though. This corn, twenty something dollars a bag. You get about four days out of a bag. Maybe here out that way. Margo just dips a bucket into it and feeds them in the morning. So you feed them out of guilt for shooting all them ducks in your life? Yeah. Gun smoke? I think it is. <laughs> I these... think they all come back to haunt me. So this is payback? This is payback time. Souls that you brought back into yeah. the earth. And I got some that ain't that old. Some of them chickens is, is uh, was late hatching August, early September. What kind of ducks is it? They're mostly mixed between tame ducks and wild mallards. There is some wild black ducks there. Now that season opens tomorrow morning, so if they were smart, they would stay right here. Wild. Obviously they're not wild if they're eating this. Oh yeah, but they, anyway, I've had ducks come into this pond. Wild, soon as you come up here, they'd fly. Within two days, they'd be eating corn out of your hand. That's how dependent they, they all, you know that old saying, they don't bite the hand that feeds them. Same as in birds. I had a big Canada goose come here one day. I was going to shoot it just because it was a wild goose, right? I said, nah, you don't need it. You got a deep freeze full of ducks. Two days later, that goose was up to the steps eating bread and corn out of her hand, a wild goose. So I got way more enjoyment out of the time I spent with her. Of course, she flew away than I would have shooting her. Yeah, well, that's an amazing story. He don't like that dog. The dog's bad. He uh, he don't hurt them. He just like takes them off the bank and they fly in the pond and just tickle at it. And then them ducks. Come over. That big gander that gets all of them. There comes some more Brown one here. With the wing hanging down. She broke that wing. She hit the wires. Yes, five six years ago. A little tall duck. And I said she won't make it up to the pond. Raccoons will have her. So I put her in here. She's been here ever since. Still living. How long? She's been in here about six years, that little call duck, with that broken wing. There's no way of fixing it. That mal, that white mallard drake and the other one there, he's blind in one eye. She can't fly, and they've paired up. They're paired. Yeah, right? yeah. And the other two is completely blind. The other two black ones there is blind in both eyes. They just feel the way around. What happened to them? Born blind, breed run out. Like they was hatched blind when they was chickens. You find them going around and around circles, pick them up, they're blind. So we raised them, put them in here. They've lived a good long life. They're seven, eight year old. They have water, they have food. It's like that little call duck. I never had the heart to kill her just because she had a broken wing. Blind ones have young too? Oh well, yeah. And they're normal? Yeah. It's just, well, you can see this fellow's eye here, look. He hasn't even got an eye. Uh, Notice it. See how his eye is? Thought oh, something gets too close to him. He don't know what it is. He just jumps, right? He hears it, but he can't see it. That's the way they end, but they live good lives. Yeah, good life. Somebody brought them two hens here. Had them when they were chickens. They didn't want them no more. And that old white rooster there, that's uh, one of Randall Ross's over to Stony Island when he died. Nobody was looking after his hens and stuff, and we went over and got a load of them. That's been a while ago, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, that, you look at him. You can tell how old he is. He's the rest of them has all died off. He's the last one I got. His comb looks kind of... Yeah, the old fellow's had his day. Now, this young sprucey fella here just took over the helm. This is what they call a uh, seacrest. He's a pretty bird. They're more or less just pets, is all. We mm -hmm. get two eggs a day from them hens. They recover, you release them back into the wild? Yeah, yeah, the ones that really make it. I've had some hit by cars, put them in there, they come to, you know what I mean, like, and after a week or so, they're perfectly fine, I take them up the pond. Now, some that's hurt that bad, I will put them out of the misery, right? There's, there's no helping them. I like them ones there. Oh, look, see how they jump? Them ducks? Yeah. They're blind, so they hear something coming up behind them, they don't know what it is. They'll fetch a beat. Especially that one over by that fence there, by the gate. If 
but they look happy otherwise. Yes, they know where the feed is. They, uh, we don't move the water pan. We leave it in the same place. So they come out, they go around, they'll find that water pan, they'll run into it. And they know where the water is. There's no sense killing them just because they're blowing. Yeah, never would think this from gun smoke. Gun yeah. smokes critters. Gun smokes sanctuary. <laughs> It's a little known fact about yeah. gun smoke. Man killed thousands of ducks and deer in his life in, in, in saving ducks' lives. So from, from I think my uh, conscience is starting to get the best of me. <laughs> yeah, keeping crippled birds yeah. alive for six years. Yeah, keeping cripples alive for six years and out duck hunting. If I see a cripple, I blow it over in a second. But that's for food, right? Yeah, that's I suppose. These are for pets. It's a little different mindset, I yeah. guess.